It is Thursday. It is Monday, Thursday. Uh, sounds like a song. Monday, Monday. Uh, well, it's a, it's a date that's uh, celebrated in the Christian calendar uh, as uh, to commemorate uh, the the day or the evening, the Passover uh, supper that would later be called the Last Supper. Uh, and the Eucharistic uh, uh, ceremony that was uh, uh, observed in that story is sort of the basis of the, the Orthodox Christian uh, Mass. The eating of the bread and the drinking of the of the wine as the body and blood of uh, of the deity, and so far as it goes, it uh, it is a insanely good uh, and uh, very common and very visceral uh, magical ceremony that, uh, if uh, done with the proper uh, understanding and intent, magical intent. Uh, is of the greatest uh, efficacy. Certainly a big, uh, uh, it features in the story of the Christian mysticism, the, the Holy Grail, the Parsifal thing, the lance, the grail, the, the, the wine, the host and things. Uh, but I've got a couple, and I know we're right in the middle of the Thelemic Holy Days, too. And believe me, there's a tie-in tie here, because uh, uh, Crowley's uh, Mass of the Gnostic Catholic Church, or the Ecclesia Gnostica Catholica, is an awesomely uh, powerful, beautiful, elegant Eucharistic ceremony. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, it's one of Gr Crowley's greatest rituals, as far as I'm I'm concerned. Uh, to a lesser degree, there's a, a Eucharistic uh, Mass that was first published in uh, his uh, Book of Lies, in chapter 44, and 44 is the numeration of the Hebrew word for blood, dm, dalaf mem. Uh, and uh, it's a Eucharist of uh, uh, where the it's a solo ritual it's done at sunset and I, we've talked about it before here uh, as a matter of fact I've got a, a YouTube of it uh, out there uh, someplace uh, but anyway, it's a Eucharistic uh, ceremony. Instead of wine to represent blood, it uses uh, a tiny portion of the magician's own blood that soaks the wafer and the magician consumes that uh, at sunset. But, but before the magician uh, consumes the, the bloodied host, the blood is exposed to the last rays of a setting sun. So uh, as the sun is going down in the energy of the sun and the light and the, 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 all the symbolic godness of the sun is bathing just a small drop of uh, blood on the magician's breast. And then that sun-charged blood, that living sun-charged blood is soaked into the wafer of meal and honey and uh, thick leavings of uh, red wine. And then with full intent, the magician consumes the host and it uh, and the natural magical mechanism of the magician's own digestive system, if you will, takes over. 
and holds that and keeps that sun and fills and nourishes every cell of that magician's body, keeps the sun safe all night until it appears the, the next morning. It's a very cool ceremony. And Eucharists are very cool. And to tell you the truth, uh, part of my transition from being uh, a complete materialistic atheist, which by many uh, definitions of the term, by many people's definitions of the term, I still am. But I was a cynical, uh, materialist, atheist in high school. And, but after high school, when I moved to California, took, it, uh, <laughs> took LSD, got into Eastern mysticism, and, and all of that was, lay ahead of me. One of the first acts that, that triggered what would be my magical birth and my magical, uh, the will of my life, I guess, was a ceremony that took place, a Eucharistic ceremony, what they would call Communion Sunday in Columbus, Nebraska. Now, I've read this over a million times to you. Uh, it's from My Life with the Spirits. Uh, in the chapter called Holy Communion, and I'm just going to read just a couple of uh, just a couple of uh, uh, snippets from that thing, and then I want to read something from Crowley. Uh, let's see. Uh, Issuing pagan ritual and not wishing to be confused with the Satanic Church of Rome. Methodists, like most Protestants, take communion infrequently. What is for Catholics the central and most intensely personal act of worship is to Protestants an embarrassing reminder that once upon a time, in order to be a Christian, it was necessary to regularly put one's faith where one's mouth is and then swallow it. Methodists uh, take pride in the fact that they don't believe a priest is necessary to ritualistically bless and consecrate the sacred elements. They don't believe that words, Latin or otherwise, can conjure the Holy Spirit into the blessed cup. They don't believe that common bread and wine can be magically transubstantiated into flesh and blood of God. As a matter of fact, where the sacrament of communion is concerned, Protestants just don't believe. Oh, they say they do, but anyway. Nevertheless, like island natives who, obedient to, in obedience to some primitive instinct, still fling a, an occasional virgin into a volcano. And they set aside a handful of Sundays a year to pass around the plates piled high with tiny cubes of wonder bread and microscopic glasses of grape juice and eat and drink when ordered to do so. Well, the last Sunday that uh, I was in Columbus, Nebraska, last Sunday of my 10 year uh, exile in Nebraska was coming to an end and I was moving back to California to attend college, start my, start my life uh, anew. And uh, I had decided I wasn't going to take communion. I just wasn't going to do it. And I sang in the choir. I had to, I had to be there. I had to attend. And I had to wear a robe and everything else. But I figured that, I, no, I'm comfortable with my atheism here. I'm leaving town in the morning. <laughs> and by God, fuck it. I'm not going to take communion. How, what kind of a hypocrite would I be if I took communion? But then I was sort of stuck in the choir loft, and the choir took communion first. 
And uh, we had to march all out and file all out. And there's a person in front of me and a person in back. So I decided that I, uh, I'll go, I'll kneel. But when they say take eat, I, I won't take and eat. Okay. And uh, so I thought I'd just kneel there in my robe with everybody else right in the, in the front at the communion rail. But I wouldn't eat or drink. I was very excited or maybe a little scared. My heart pounded so loudly I could hear it clicking in my throat. Now on the evening he was betrayed, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, for this is my body. Everybody took, everybody ate, but I took not, I ate not. It was my first adult act of conscience. I swooned with ecstasy. I'd never felt so alive in my life, and this is true. I was physiologically frying. And when they had eaten, he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which, shall, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Everybody took, everybody drank, but I took not, and I, I drank not. I was almost hyperventilating, and I felt I had burst. And he said to them, I tell you, I shall not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in my Father's kingdom. Okay, it was over in a minute. The others down their pathetic drop of grape juice and returned the sticky little glasses to their tight little holes. I had done it. I had freed myself from God. I was one with the likes of Thomas Paine, Bertrand Russell, and Mark Twain. Now, if you've read My Life of the Spirits, you know what happened. You know what happened next. And it was, it was almost as embarrassing as later when I'd sit on my own wand and break it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, we'll have to have to wait to, to finish that or if, I'm sure you've already heard that story. Anyway, here's what Crowley has to say about the Eucharist. And I posted a thing this morning, uh, 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 Constance, uh, uh, a few years back, uh, did a painting, one of her one of her marvelous paintings, and uh, it uh, shows the host and wine and things. And I tried to get dig up a picture of it because she's got it in storage down in Southern California, but uh, it, it it was a tweak of what uh, Jesus said at the Last Supper, because the Eucharist ceremony that's described is awesome. It's magical. It's not, don't, don't stick up your nose at, at the, the, even the Orthodox Mass. It's, it's, when he said, do this in remembrance of me, take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. Now, there's plenty of wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, Kabbalistic and magical truths in that statement, at least for one view of a magical formula, one view of your conscious pos position, your level of awakeness. And 
she said, no, he didn't say it do this in remembrance of me because that implies duality and uh, uh, a separateness that truly doesn't exist. She said, he said, do this and remember you are me. And that's just so cool. In the in the mass of the Gnostic Catholic Church, after after the uh, priest and priestess together unite themselves in the baby, making a baby that is the host in wine, the two become one, and then the one is eaten. Okay. Uh, in my mouth be the essence of the life of the sun, the wine. In my mouth be the essence of the joy of the earth. Oh, excuse me, the life of the sun is the host. It's round across it. The joy of the earth, the wine. After that wine has exploded and dissolving that host that is inside and they become a one thing and it spreads through the body, through the blood, through every cell of the blood, the priest turns around and so does the congregation when they take communion and they say, there is no part of me that is not of the God. Do this and remember you are me. Here's a couple things from uh, uh, chapter 20 of Magic and Theory and Practice. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. And I'm just going to read two little things. One of the simplest and most complete of magic ceremonies is the Eucharist. It consists in taking common things, transmuting them into things divine, and consuming them. So far, it is a type of every magical ceremony, for the reabsorption of the force is a kind of consummation. But it has a more restricted application as follows. Take a substance. This may be of a composite character, symbolic of the whole course of nature. Make it God and consume it. There are many ways of doing this, but they may easily be classified according to the number of elements of which the sacrament is composed. The highest form of the Eucharist is that in which the element consecrated is one. It is the one substance, not two, not living, not dead, neither liquid nor solid, neither hot nor cold, neither male nor female. This sacrament is secret in every respect. Okay, and then Crowley jumps into inscrutability when you uh, uh, are getting the idea he's talking about something specific that he doesn't want to uh, 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 be misunderstood by uh, those who are incapable of understanding. <laughs> but I'm going to... Uh, then he talks about... Uh, hang on for a second. Uh, a Eucharist of some sort should most assuredly be consummated daily by every magician, and he should regard it as the main sustenance of his magical life. It is of more importance than any other magical ceremony, because it is a complete circle. The whole force, the whole of the force expended is completely reabsorbed. Yet the virtue is that the vast gain represented by the abyss between man and God, the magician becomes filled with God, fed upon God. 
intoxicated with God. Little by little, his body will become purified by the internal lustration of God. Day by day, his mortal frame, shedding its earthly elements, will become in very truth the temple of the Holy Ghost. Day by day, matter is replaced by spirit. The human by divine. Ultimately, the change will be complete. God manifest in flesh will be his name. Crowley had great respect for the for the Eucharist. And it's a historical fact that Crowley started to, or got the idea and started to create and compose the mass of the Gnostic Church, Gnostic Catholic Church, by being totally blown away by the pageantry of a mass, a R Russian Orthodox mass, that he uh, witnessed at St. Basil's in uh, Moscow. So I'm going to read just the Eucharist part of the Mass of the, uh, of the, the, the Gnostic Mass. The host is on the patent, the flat, like solar platter. And the wine is in a cup, and the cup is, at the moment, covered. Priests and priestesses did all of their magic uh, uh, preparation for it. Uh, it's gotten to us to the place where a small particle of the host, the broken off particle of the host, was placed on the tip of the priest's lance, and in a absolutely beautiful uh, piece of ceremonial uh, business, the lance point is dipped into the, to the cup and the particle slides off into the, uh, into the wine. Now, prior to both, prior to that climactic uh, act, both the host and the, the wine were purified and consecrated in all sorts of wonderful uh, magical focus was uh, uh, d directed at each of those uh, uh, elements when they were separate. But now they are one. Okay. The priest makes five crosses on the paten and the cup Well, three on the paten and cup, and one on the paten and one on the cup. He says, Life of man upon earth, fruit of labor, sustenance of endeavor, thus be thou nourishment of the spirit. Now he takes, uh, the host is still on the platter, or the paten. He touches the host with the lance. By the virtue of the rod, be this bread the body of God. He takes the host and blesses it in Greek. Toto estito sumomo. He kneels, rises, adores, he turns, shows the host of the people, replaces the host. Now he takes the cup. Vehicle of the joy of man upon earth solace of labor, inspiration of endeavor, thus be thou ecstasy of the spirit. He touches the cup with the lance. By the virtue of the rod, be this wine the blood of God. Then he takes the cup. Toto estito poterium tu haimatos mu. He kneels, 
turns, adores, rises, turns, shows the cup to the people, replaces the cup and adores. For this is the covenant of resurrection. He stands and he makes now five crosses on the priestess. He is, as it were, turning up the microscopic power of, the, of his microscope and now turning the priestess, the body of the priestess herself into the altar. She's now the altar. Accept, O Lord, this sacrifice of life and joy, true warrants of the covenant of resurrection. He offers the lance to the priestess who kisses it. He then touches her between the breasts and upon the body and then flings her breast and body, then flings his arms out let this offering be borne upon the waves of ether to our Lord and Father, the Son, who traveleth over the heavens in his name on. Closes his hands, kisses the priestess between the breasts, makes three great crosses on the cup and patent and himself. He then strikes his breast and all everyone the congregation they all strike their breasts hear ye all saints of the true church of old time now essentially present that of ye we claim heirship with ye we claim communion and from ye we claim benediction in the name of e he elevates the host and the, the the cup and the host together just like in that picture i posted this morning hagios 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 iao holy 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 okay there's a bit of business where the the people all join together in a responsive reading finally the priest kneels The priest takes the patent between the index finger and his medius so before he kneels. And the priestess clasps the cups. And this is where, Lord most secret, bless this spiritual food into our bodies, bestowing upon us health and wealth and strength and joy and peace and that fulfillment of will and love under will that is perpetual happiness. He uncovers the cup, genuflex, breaks off the particle. Toto estito sperma muho pater esta no huyo stiatinu mahagion. Au, au, au. When the lance point is uh, finally dipped into the, the cup, the particle slides into the cup, and the priest and priestess say together, uh, the ecstatic sound, the word, if you will, of the sound of mating doves. Really, you. Okay, the pr I'm going to skip ahead because there's all sorts of other things. This is not a talk about the Gnostic Mass this morning. The priestess takes the lance in her right hand. With her left hand, she offers the patent. The priest kneels. In my mouth be the essence of the life of the sun. Now he takes the host and makes a cross on the patent. And he eats it. priest then offers the cup and he makes a cross with the cup on the priestess. In my mouth be the essence of the joy of the earth. And he consumes it along with that particle that's floating there.
he rises, takes the lance, and turns to the people. See, it's a communion. It's not only a communing with the people. It's, it's, a, it's a current. It's a flow. He doesn't just keep it. It's got to flow through him, unobstructed, unoccluded. It's a communion. The priest t takes the wine and the host and wine, and then he turns to the people to communicate the line, there is no part of me that is not of the gods. And if done properly, in my opinion, when the people come up to take their host and their wine to do their magic, they do just as the priest does. The people communicate as did the priest, it says here. They also turn to their fellows and announce, there is no part of me that is not of the gods. Anyway, to close with the closing line of the, the, the Mass of the Phoenix, after uh, the, the magician has, uh, has eaten his bloodied host, he said, uh, I entered in with woe. With mirth I now go forth, and with thanksgiving to do my pleasure upon the earth, among the legions of the living. And that's where we'll stop it today. we got to tackle that third chapter comment uh, uh, tomorrow. And then, of course, Saturday starts the three days, the feast of the three days of the writing of the Book of the Law. And it will bring the uh, 2003 or 2023 uh, Holy Days of Thelema to an end. Anyway, until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself, be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.